Double injured here, 3v3, Estil Province blue team. Wise Windu plays a whoops by the Rexarch to the point commander that fights range combat, great for capping and harassing with some good control abilities too. Alongside Brood, which is a force commander, very good offense, fights in melee combat, can also tank, disrupt and support with buffs, seems to be a fan of largely unhealthy caffeine braced products. Rounding off the blue team is Frozen Vapor playing a Chaos Sorcerer offensive and disruptive commander, lots of great manipulation and control. This is Word Bearers DLC, which is pretty awesome. And red team, final push is a Blood Ravens Tech Groin, starts off range combat, puts out some good damage, can also support with structures and repair. Alongside Mother Funkin T Rex is a Hive Tyrant, very durable commander. Walks through cover and cannot be suppressed. Very good offense, some support and disruption as well. Just walks through everything. And rounding off the team is YT T Rex playing a Plague Champion. Starts off range combat with his damage over time. Bolter can get melee weapons, some decent utility and support. He can build turrets and repair, but is very slow. Is this yay? Some Death Guard. I have Tyrant making a nuisance of himself, tying up those tactical marines, he's great at that in first engagement. Former Gaunts are trying to get a model of them and they're caught in retreat and he's going to get at least one here. You would think two models of those tactical marines, ouch, bad first engagement for Broodwitch. Just poor positioning on his tactical marines, should have been backing off and leading those Former Gaunts into trouble instead of just staying there and trying to fight a calculated risk by Broodwitch which he miscalculated, Ormagant's getting away with just three model losses as well. Maybe he expected his force commander to do a better job disrupting them with his special attacks. Wise Windu with double Dire Avengers backing away from the Tactical Marine scouts are capping. Plague Champion pushing the east side behind these buildings, getting double heretics onto some enemy Chaos Space Marines there. Double Doom Blast, triple Doom Blast with some Doom Bolts, he's gonna wipe those heretics is he? That was a bit nuts, but those heretics do get away I think. We have aspiring champion heretics for Frozen Vapor and two default heretic squads for Whitey into some Chaos Space Marines all in retreat. Warrior Brood already up for Mother Funkin T-Rex and he's really funked up Brood Witch here who's forced off trying to get close to base for some reason. 486, 456, but he did take the rep point Brood Witch. He's got some Assault Marines on the way. Havoc's on the way for Frozen Vapor who has gone for double Chaos Space Marines. Looking pretty awesome with Word Bearers DLC, Wise Windu with Rangers up, Sniper Infantry, long range burst damage. They can also disrupt from long range which makes them so so good. Deploy hollow fields as well, all sorts of good stuff. And they also act as a detector. 468, 456, good for trying to force your Space Marine opponent into getting a Salt Marine so you can counter initiate with stuff. And he's up against double Sniper Scouts getting behind his shot blocking wall. Rangers generally will outshoot Sniper Scouts pretty well. But he's up against two of them there. We have double Aspiring Champion Heretics for YT. And these are 25 power each, these Aspiring Champions, so they're not cheap. That's 50 power spent on his Heretics. He needs to make that work out for him in terms of pressure or outright squad losses. He's now pushing alongside his entire... His, both of his teammates, all three of them pushing here. Going for a power harass maybe. Havocs are set up. And they're now getting shots on stuff that's peeking around that corner. Hive Titan might just try and walk into this thing. He has his improved synapse. Assault Marines jumping in. Here comes the support from Brood Witch and Wise Windu now. These guys do not have their aspects, so they can't get any nasty grenades in. He's gone for double ranges in response to those double ouch sniper scouts, and that is a really good light grenade throw. Or is it? Because he just infected a whole bunch of his allied stuff there, almost wiping out those poor Tyranids. In fact, did he hit any enemies at all? I don't know if he actually did. But you have it. There's the risk reward of Blight Grenades. They can kind of screw you over if you throw them into a big muddled engagement. It's, they're much better if you can suppress a blob and then throw your Blight Grenades in, which is why I, was, I often use them with the Fetid Armor. Get that suppression and then throw it immediately. 4-4-3, four, 4-2-8. Four, four, 
he broke up the engagement with them at least. Hive Tyrant chasing down the Force Commander there who's going to try and revive this Chaos Sorcerer. But now we have the Plague Sword up on the Plague Champion and this thing ignores Melee Resistance Aura. To my knowledge the only weapon that does so and he immediately goes down with it. In the next update that sword will give him plus 70 health which is going to be a huge help because at the moment as you saw right there if he doesn't have any supporting war gear alongside the sword he's very vulnerable and still very slow with just 680 hit points on a melee commander that's that slow you're going to go down pretty quickly broodness goes up a bit risky place to put it with the chaos forces so close he has double eternal war on the chaos space marines has havocs as well we're going to move along and support this push in the mid or at least try and keep these tyrannies at bay here it is warrior brood 18 dps power melee i believe per model they are also a detector and they also jump into combat granting a basic synapse to all this stuff now that the hive tyrants off the field is coming back though something's gone down here it's the whoops rex up down on the west side fire pouring into the scouts got them way too close they need to try and keep these guys at their maximum range kicking off mid kicking off mid big time Force Commander with a Power Sword getting that big buff off from the Battle Cry. The Power Sword actually improves the buff from Battle Cry. And they don't really have an answer to these Havocs from Frozen Vapor apart from a flank, I suppose, which you can do on this map quite easily. Or well, should be able to, in a way. Heretics just about getting away there for. No, they don't get away, in fact. Gone down from Whitey. There's double CSM as well, and they just about get away. Or engagement for Whitey. Can his Tyranid ally hold? No, he cannot. And Blue Team are going to sweep through middle. They have a flame up on this tactical marine squad thanks to Broodwitch. So he can come and hit maybe two of those generators because those two are nicely lined up for a single shot. Double CSM, going to shoot some barrels for Chaos. 407 and 405. They might wipe this entire thing with those double CSM there as well. Look how quickly the generators go down. 407, 398. Can he even defend against this? He does have grenade launchers, so he can disrupt them at least. But his plague champion's still down over here. And he basically did nothing with that sword. So that's a big loss. Sniper's taken down an assault marine, which is good. They took down two of the generators. Maybe they should have stayed to try and finish it off, but there's the assault marine jump. Frozen Vapor might have been wary of Assault Marines coming in and ruining that party, but now they're walking right into Havoc so they jump again. It's risky for them though. Double CSM both forcing melee on them with Eternal War would be bad. And there's some heretics coming in with a Doom Blast. Those Assault Marines lucky to get away. Warrior Brood with Adrenal Glands already up in Tier 2, giving them heavy melee damage. 23 DPS is it? Yes. And that melee resistance, sorry, that melee synapse on these Formagaunts who do have Endless Swarm. So they are up to 1400 hit points with melee synapse Endless Swarm at level 1. And that's going to go up even more when the Hive of Tyrants around because he has improved synapse. Let's see what that goes up to. Venom Brood also up, already have their range synapse, so he's got both specialized synapses in play. Dark Creepers on the field for Wisemen, though, with the aspect of Ranger, so they can shoot down those warriors pretty badly with that Inferno damage, or pretty well, I should say, badly for Mother Funkin. Can we see these Hormagorts get in range of this melee synapse and see how much health they have, please? At level 1. That 1478, 1425, 1478, shouldn't be more than that, surely, with improved synapse. Not sure. Maybe it doesn't stack in the way I think it does. But I think improved synapse is 25% more health, and melee synapse is 60%, right? But I guess it's not additive. Your Space Marines, level 1 with Marco Zinch, and also Marco Zinch. On the other squad for Whitey, Frozen Vapor on the other hand, not giving his CSM a marker yet. And I think that's generally a good idea. If you get your marks up too quickly on your CSM for Chaos, you can be left in a lurch if a quick vehicle comes on the field. 407, 310, you just saw a really nice smite from the Librarian going in amongst the Warrior group, almost finishing them off. 
the Hive Tank going for the Venom Cannon here. A pretty good ranged weapon really, but he has such good melee weapons that unless there's a lot of vehicles on the field and you don't think you can get close to them, it's usually a better idea to go for an aggressive melee build, but that's just my personal opinion. We'll see how he does with this Venom Cannon. We have seen it do very good things. Can he hit this sorcery? Hit him there. Doesn't have the best accuracy versus infantry. It's not cheap either. That thing's 40 power. 397, 310, 2 to 1 cap for the red team. Whirlwind on the way for Broodwitch. So he's gonna gonna have that disruption from long range. Frozen Vapor with a KF Shred Knight. He's going for Mark of Horn. So he can really good synergy with the sorcerer since you can teleport it out of trouble, which it invariably gets into using Blood Rage. And we have the big change incoming for melee dreadnoughts of course they're going to get a melee resistance aura making them incredibly powerful against other melee units such as knobs or ogrins or whatever else you might try and send into a dreadnought in melee combat to deal with it but they're still going to die handily to las cannons and melter bombs and all sorts of stuff just need to try and keep away from them in melee combat going to help I think a lot against the heavy melee weapons for the commanders especially stuff like the power claw and those crushing claws here comes that whirlwind massive engagement here 359 310 the jumping in to what could be a lot of trouble with smite going in as well looks like the assault marines aren't really being targeted down goes that whirlwind that venom cannon doing well massive engagement here 351 310 now that Dreadnought's moving in, there's a Noxious Cloud which didn't seem to hit a whole lot. Now he's moving it, 346, 310. Scouts with a Sergeant, can they move in for a grenade? No, too late. Here come Double Rangers. Red Team though, have the West Side locked down. Final, we haven't looked at this very often over here, but Final Push doing well with his level 3 Tech Marine. So he's killed a bunch of stuff with his Tech Marine, hasn't he? Dark Creepers getting those shots onto those Assault Marines, ouch. And there's that suppression from pinning fire. Good grief, look at the damage there, but they do get away without a loss. That's Assault Marines for you, 326, 310. Plague Champion is back, that was a good Blight Grenade. Forces off the Heretics and kills a bunch of them. Actually does really good damage now to Blight Grenade. 318, 310, Power Harass. I assume he has enough red to walk out that dreadnought or he wouldn't be pushing it like this. 312, 310. Can't finish off that last generator and here come a bunch of Tyranids with Venom Brood. The Hive Tyrant did go down incidentally but is revived by the Tech Marine which levels up the Tech Marine. There's the Blood Rage on the Chaos Dreadnought. It is so scary when the Blood Rage is up. I think it does 40% more damage with Blood Rage up. Increased speed, increased durability, but can he get it out of trouble here? Just about, wow, 79 hit points left. That's a global ability of the Chaos Sorcerer allows you to teleport any allied unit back to the Sorcerer's position. In retail, of course, it teleports your entire army to the Sorcerer's position, which led to some really crazy stuff, teleporting a great and clean one to you and things. But it's been adjusted for Elite. 282, 310. 2 to 1 cap for the red team now. As players start to think about getting into tier 3, Wise Wind is already there. With double Rangers, Dark Creepers, and that Guardian Weapon team retaking the west side. After final push came mid to support and revive that Hive Tyrant. Now he's going back to the west side. Ouch. Sword jump point blank onto those Rangers to try and disrupt them. Can they get a model here? Surely they can. Yes, they got one model. Grenade though prevents them from pushing further. Good dodge from Final Push. Now has level 2 Assault Marines. Tech Marine level 4 Signum Armor is up. And those Dire Avengers are done for. Here comes a bunch of Tyranids as well. Wise Men, they're just caught there. He has the power blades up on his warp for Rexark. Did Final Push have a vehicle at one point? Not sure. Maybe he just wants that 
powerful melee weapon to tie up scouts and things and the tech marine himself 276 288 dark creepers are actually heavy infantry not losing a model from that from those scouts there must have hit different models each one Rexar now going after the scout says he good grenade but it's well dodged Wise Windu is forced off there's some hellfire rounds from the stone guard veterans taken down the walks Rexar with the help of those snipers what's going on here big push by the Tyranids a jump on the assault marines as well librarian is there that smite's been pretty good so far and that venerable is getting absolutely owned gonna lose them he's gonna lose them definitely down they go terrible terrible engagement for mother funkin he got mother funked quite badly there really bad position to be in not knowing what's on your flank rushing in like that going for a power harass i assume 265 285 there's touch of nogal on some heretics but he's targeting the force commander with it not really something you want to use against single entities Oh, he doesn't. Oh, these are grenade launch heretics as well. He can't even use Doom Blast, so that's a really bad unit to put Touch of Nurgle on since it will do less damage. Exploding heretics. It's only good if you can use that Doom Blast usually to put it on heretics in a way. You can put it on other stuff. Really good to put it on Plague Marines and things like Raptors when they jump in. Oops, Rex Arc still down, and of course we have chosen Plague Marines on the way in an upcoming update. Now these guys will be awesome to put Touch of Nurgle on because they will explode also on death. Two, three, five, two, eight, five. Warrior Brood level two. Moving up, still giving that melee synapse. No, they aren't. They aren't giving it to the Hormagons because the Hormagons are dead. It is a capillary tower, but they really haven't dealt with this Chaos Dreadnought at all. It's just level the two there. Actually, does have a range weapon. This guy, a little snore or twin link bolter, underslung on its sarcophagus, which doesn't have a sound effect, but does fire and does do a reasonable amount of damage. Apparently, not sure exactly what kind of damage it does. Two, three, five, two, seven, six. I wonder if the damage of that underslung bolter gets buffed when he uses blood rage, or is the 40% damage buff only for his claws? Warrior Brood now trying to retake. 235, 259. It's close. Double cap for blue though. What else does the Force Commander have? He has Alacrity. Is switching to the Thunderhammer though. Double Plague Marines for Whitey. Really tough anti vehicle unit with a snaring missile launcher. Kind of a generalist unit. They are still light infantry though, so if they're caught out of cover by something that does a lot of piercing damage, they can go down pretty quickly because they're death explosion doesn't heal themselves anymore so if they're caught by like upgraded shooters or even Dar Avengers with them bold enough they can go down pretty quickly and be outshot you need to use them behind cover with Nurgle worship and then they become a massive massive problem to deal with we are losing the requisition point you can even there. use them to send into melee spots to try and debuff their speed and wait for juicy explosions to go off 235 220 blue stream trying to counter push Saltman is jumping into a lot of things here. Taking massive amounts of damage on his Marcos each CSM and forced off out of Tyrant level 2. Here comes some Havoc trying to set up. Out of going to force melee combat, is he? No, he's just going to try and shoot them. Boom, there's one shot. It does have splash damage, this, this Venom Cannon, which I think saves it from being terrible because you can hit multiple models with it. Can you finish them off? He does retain a reasonable amount of melee damage, the High of Tyrant, when he does have his Venom Cannon. He does attack more slowly though, but per hit is still pretty good damage. 235, 194. 2 1 cap for blue team, massive engagement in mid. There's a Carn Effect with a Barb Strangler on it. Look at the blue team's rosters, they have huge rosters. Why is Windu filling out his space on this replay card, and so is. Frozen Vapor, another whirlwind for Brood, which just lost, no he didn't, he just upgraded his Assault Marines to Vanguard Veterans, gives them all power melee weapons, a Thunder Hammer, Power Swords, and a Lightning Core, you can swap that Thunder Hammer out for a Power Fist also, and makes them into a pretty dangerous fighty little squad, they can go up against 
default range terminators and do a really good job. 235, 170. Things like CSM, of course, don't really want to fight those guys if they're not marked in horn. Maybe even if they are. Level 2 Warp Spider Exarch has improved targeters. Spawn mines here birthed out by the Carnifex. What's this librarian up to? He's forcing off a Carnifex here. Something's being called in. Terminators, is it? Yep, Assault Terminators, in fact, from Broodwitch. Going straight after this Carnifex. These guys with Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields. And these Thunder Hammers are heavy melee Thunder Hammers. Unlike the Thunder Hammers that the Force Commander and the Vanguard veterans can get. 2, 3, 5, 1, 6, 8. They're still chasing this thing down. You cannot retreat your Terminators, but you can teleport them out. Some Nurgle worship now. And double Plague Marines with Marco Zinc CSM will do a decent amount of damage to Terminators. Terminators count as a large target, so anti-vehicle weapons will do good damage to them since they'll hit them consistently. And that will also be the case for this High of Tyrant's Venom Cannon. So we'll see what he can do against Terminators with that thing. Well, when getting shots in, the Force Commander is stunned by something. What was he stunned by there? I'm not sure. But he's forced off. Was it the big champion? Oh, he has his fist. He has that was pestilence strike there. That's a noxious cloud. Also has armor of pestilence and his black grenade still. Doesn't move his cloud again. Is it stuck? What's going on? Now it's moving. Too late though. 217. 168. West side we have an avatar of Kane up against a predator tank, which is getting way too close. There is Mark Target. He's trying to shoot it with his melter gun, but he's been tied up by the Warp Spider Exarch. Also has Signum, which you just saw the mark target going off there. 206, 168. Vengeance rounds loaded in by the Stone Guard veterans. They should actually be using their Kraken bolts versus the Avatar since it's super heavy infantry. 197, 168. Wailing Doom hits some scouts, but not much else now. It's kicking off over here. Carnifex is forcing melee combat on a fire prism. That was crazy. Fire prism. Wow, if it didn't move away there, that Venom Cannon would have owned it. Avatar is going to go down though. Carnifex here to force melee combat, and I think it was the Hive Tyrant. It got the last shot there. Down goes the Avatar. 179, 168. Red team retain west side, but their natural has been decapped by some sneaky. Heretics. Broodwitch could get a predator tank of his own pretty soon. He might seem save up for a land raider though. More dire Avengers on the way for Wise Window got caught by two players there. Triple Plague Marines by Whitey. We'll see what he can do with these things. He does have a Plague Champion also with Plague Fist, Pestilence, but he's gone for Black Marines. No Icon of Noble, which I think is much better with this build. We did have the Black Marines first. Havocs run away. They do have a Laz Cannon. So they can do some stuff against this kind of effect. And here's a Swarm Lord Super Unit for Tyranids. Massive monstrous creature with vehicle armor. Very scary in melee combat. Has a Blade Storm ability which sends stuff flying and damages it heavily. Really bad news for melee infantry to get close to him with that thing. Or any infantry really. Can also heal himself with Leech Essence and allows you to reinforce around the Swarm Lord. Terminators chasing down a tank with their Thunder Hammers. Look how quickly they're moving with Veil of Time up. Librarian also has the Four Staff. Gives him a pretty powerful power melee weapon and some decent range damage as well where he can shoot those lightning bolts out of his hand. 168, 156 is very close on VP's 1 to 1 cap. Feels as though one really bad or good engagement is going to swing this game at the end. Sacred Standard up for the Force Commander. Level 7, that constant 25% damage buff is really strong late game in 3v3s because that will affect your allies as well. 161, 154, Mercy to Strike on triple Plague Marines here. Vanguard veterans are forced to retreat. There's a Smite. There's Touch of Nurgle. What has he put it on? I think he's put it on a heretic skin. Why has he done that? They're not being targeted and they can't Doom Blast. That is a complete waste. 
there's some zinc, there's some Nurgle worship I should say. He might have put it on the wrong unit, he might have tried to click another unit on the map. When you're using targeted abilities like that, you should use the squad tabs to target. Cleans it right up for you. 161, 130. That right, was that a right lance? I'm not sure it's dead anyway. Terminator's in a bit of trouble here. Some enemy assault marines jumping after them, and the Plague Champion's army is going to try and chase them down. They're down to two models. You might be able to get another one, or maybe not. 161, 127. Now he spots that whirlwind and goes after it with his triple Plague Marines. And they will deal with the whirlwind pretty quickly. That's the Terminator teleporting out thanks to the Librarian's Gate of Infinity. Can teleport a unit to him. Really good synergy with Terminators, especially Assault Terminators, getting them out of trouble. 143, 127, Fire Prism against two Predator tanks. It's not a good fight for the Fire Prism. Melter Gun, Tech Marine also trying to get close enough for a, a mark target, I think. Triple cap for Red Team. Blue Team backing their base, and here's a D cannon under threat. Predators need to fire against that fire prism. Can they finish it off? Surely they can. One more shot. And down it goes. 1-0-1, one, 1-2-7, one, one, triple cap for red team. They're going to see this game out, I think. Can't even get their natural back blue team. Is a great unclean one. Trying to formation going off. Killing some Chaos Space Marines. Killed the aspiring champion, I think. Great unclean one. Not using his vomit, is he? He used Cloud of Flies. Swarm Lord going after him. I'm not sure how much DPS the Swarm Lord does. I don't think it's as much as like a carnifex effects and things. It doesn't do splash damage either. 51, 127. Maybe he should have got a Doom of Manantite instead. But he's got a Zone Throat. Swarm Lord's doing quite well, I suppose. Forcing off the Great King one for sure. And allows all this little stuff to reinforce. Warrior Brood. At level 4, 2,395 hit points. Look at that. Looks like this is the game for red. Warps for Rexar is taking back the natural. But they're not going to be able to push any other VP. This is going to be it. Blue team just capitulating at the end. They were all off the map. Red team got that triple. And that's it. Red team take it. Hive Tyrant actually going for the crushing claw at the end there. With Bonded Exoskeleton and Warpfield, the Venom Cannon did reasonably well, helped him take down a Whirlwind, shot up some other infantry and stuff, but I still think just going for the Crushing Claw in the first instance, paying that extra would have been better But his team won anyway. Tech Marine level 7 at the end with Signum and Melter Gun, final push. Actually held his VP quite a lot, even though we didn't see a lot of the action over here since it was 2v2 in the mid a lot, and that's good to see. Officer Exarch did have his phase armor. Sorcerer level 6 with the Icon of Zinch. Vessels of the War Plague Champion was level 3 with those triple Plague Marines. Nurgle would have been proud. And he had Nurgle Predator on the way as well. They have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.